just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Classified. We're your hosts, Gloria Martin and Chad Jones, and today we're here with Chaplain. Uh, chaplain. <laughs> chaplain Colonel Brad Bauman, our Fort Meade Installation Chaplain, and today we're here to talk about a little bit about the services his office offers, and as well as the upcoming Hallelujah Festival. Harvest Fest. Harvest Festival. I know, Chaplain. I'm going to tell you, right? It's Hallelujah Fest. <laughs> It is okay. Uh, I, you, you would be funny when it came out in like command and staff. I was like, wait a minute. No, I and actually I asked for that to be done because I was heading up the initiative to change the name. Yeah. And so there was a discussion back and forth, but then we decided to go with Hallelujah Fest. And if if you drive across Fort Meade, you're gonna you can't miss the little clusters of of signs that that we have put up there so as of this year it's hallelujah fest so as a chaplain because at least how it was told to us to, to start with you know 12 13 years ago when hallelujah festival started it was to give you know people who did not want you know necessarily the traditional scary halloween vibe but a chance for them to get out is that sort of how you see it, or it, is that important? Is that something that people have come to you and said, hey, we, we like a kinder, gentler Halloween? Yes and no. Okay. Um, so, again, historically, it, it's been the Hallelujah Fest for I don't know how long. It was originally started with our gospel congregation, mm -hmm. and over the probably past five, six years, it's, it's came back to our office the religious support office, and so we've we've taken it over. Um, the, there is uh, truth to that statement that, that some folks are looking for an alternative to Halloween activities, and so some some traditions are are, are not accepting of of the Halloween holiday, and but their you know history is replete with examples of. Harvest festivals, end of year festivals where people come together, they rejoice about the the bounty or or lament about the lack thereof. But usually around this time time of year, October, there there are different festivals, and so we here we you know we'll like I said we'll keep it as the Hallelujah Fest this year. We'll probably look at it you know over the next year if we want to modify it to a harvest. But there were two other activities on post um, that may have been confused if we this year changed it to a harvest right. festival. But yeah, the activity itself is 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 very controlled. It's uh, you you know you can we don't encourage folks to to dress in the traditional types of way of you know goons and goblins and right. tricks or treats and and some of the traditions there. But we. Our doors are open to everybody, and if somebody wants to come as, as whatever, we're going to let them in. In my previous job, I was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chaplain, and so we, if you look at the, the emblem or the staff badge that, that we wear, there are five different swords on, on that emblem, and it used to be two cross swords and, and two upright uh, swords, and now we added a fifth sword over the past two years, which was Space Force. So Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Space Force were the, are the five elements. And I say that to say that, that I had the opportunity to, to work across all the services. And a lot of times when you've risen to the level of, of Colonel, in the chaplain corps, which we only have two general officers, mm -hmm. so you know the the probability of moving up to a general officer level is extremely low, and so you get up to O six as a chaplain, which is a challenging rank to make. You're you're pretty much a subject matter expert in in issues of the military, 
and, and a lot of my peers, myself included, prior to coming to the joint staff, I knew about the Army. I did right. not know a lot about the other services. And the neat thing is that coming here to Fort Meade, you know, in, you, the, the motto is we're, we're the most joint, joint non-joint non base. base. Yep. And so I'm perfectly comfortable, you know, seeing all the different services because for every day, for two years, I, I would service all five you know, of, of the services. And what, what it all boils down to within each of the chaplaincies, so we have three commissioning bodies. We have the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army. And the Navy is responsible for the Coast Guard and the Navy and obviously Naval Forces. And then Air Force is now responsible for Air Force and um, umbrella underneath the, the their chaplain corps, their uh, accommodating the Space Force and, and their needs. And so all of that to say, it doesn't, regardless of the service, we all have one primary mission, and, and that's to support the First Amendment, which is the free exercise of religion. Yep. And so one of the beauties of being a, a free citizen of this amazing country is the fact that, that if you choose not to worship, or if you choose to worship in this way or that way, the chaplains will not look at you and say, oh my goodness, you, you are not this, or you're not that, or you're this or that. They'll simply say that we live in a free country and we have the ability to choose whether to worship or to not worship. And we as chaplains, regardless of a branch or service, we, we fight and defend for those who choose not to worship as hard as we do for those to worship. And so when you see a chaplain, we're, we're, some may, may say, oh, they're so wishy-washy. No, we're not. We're, mm. you know, when you drill down, we're very committed men and women, but in, in a public setting, we, we are accommodating, you know, or at least making room for all of, you know, whatever folks believe or don't believe. So long, that was a long answer no, to, to was, a very short question. That was very good. Um, how long have you been how long have you been a chaplain? I see hmm. by your tabs we don't get a lot of rangers in here. So obviously you're you're pretty cool. Yeah. How, how long have you been a, have you always been a chaplain or how did you how did you how did you become one? Yeah so I joined the Army National Guard when I was 17 years old between my Jew, well, actually my parents, it was literally after my um, 17th birthday, they signed a waiver. I joined the Army National Guard. Um, I went to Fort Benning, now Fort Moore, um, in 1988 as a 17-year-old um, kid, uh, not yet fully considered an adult, with right. a Minnesota buddy platoon. So all of us... <laughs> That went to basic training, went from wherever we, we lived in Minnesota yep. down to Fort Benning, Georgia in June, and we, we were not used to the a weather. A little different, say, right? A little different. Day. Yeah, a, a significant difference. But So I did eight years as an infantryman um, in the Minnesota, Maine, and Missouri Guard. And then when I finished seminary, I, I became a chaplain and began my chaplaincy career journey on 11 January 1998. So 11 January um, 2024 is my 26th anniversary as a chaplain. So I've been active duty and been a few different places. What kind of support do you get from the other chaplains on the installation when it comes to planning these sorts of events? So that's a great question. Um, a month and a half ago, being the new installation chaplain, I probably wouldn't have been able to answer that very well. However, now I, I, I can answer it a lot more clearly. So we have 24 chaplains on Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, 21 of those chaplains are what we classify as tenant unit chaplains. So they have a separate headquarters and, and they, you know, are, they service their units and their headquarters and their commands. 
my office has has no authorities over them. Um, I have direct authority over two majors, um, my family life chaplain and my deputy resource money management uh, chaplain. The, the others on post, it is, it's all about relationships. Hi, Chuck Yang here. We have lots of events coming up in the next few weeks. On 25th, Right Arm Night at Club Mead. On 26th, Community Council and Town Hall. On 27th, Hallelujah Festival and Retiree Appreciation Day, honoring all our retirees. And of course, on 31st, Halloween. And as a reminder, you can check out all mentioned events on our Facebook page. Now back to the conversation. But what I've found consistently over the years is when, when there's a need and there's a good chaplain, they're going to come, they're going to want to be around something that, that is functional and, and, and reaching out to the community. So I, we've had great, again, we've had great support across Fort Meade, not just for the Hallelujah Festival, which I'm very much looking forward to it, it being a big activity, you know, with, with the pandemic. And, and unfortunately, some of the mentalities that, that have stuck um, with the pandemic, a lot of people went, went off of the installation, went off of, you know, Fort Meade, Maryland, the post, and they went to local churches. However, a lot of them want to come back. Unfortunately, we, we the, the chaplain corps writ large, have been slow about, you know, just moving forward like hey things are back to normal you know the religious support operations here on Fort Meade are back to normal and so we're really hoping that this this hallelujah fest is going to be one of those activities that just really generates um, energy and excitement. Are kids going to get candy? Kids are going to get a pile of candy. That's what I'm talking about yeah. okay. No, I, I, I love, I love uh, giving candy because uh, my kids are all grown. They're 22, 23, 24, and 26. Nice. Uh, but I, we used to have small kids. I love giving uh, family sugar and, and sending them <laughs> home at the end of the day. It's a blessing. It's like practice grandparenting. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> what kind of other activities can people expect at this? Okay, so the actual event's going to be happening at the Argonne Hills uh, Chapel, which is... Just Google it. Actually, I recommend that you stop at one of the, the signs and do the QR code, and it's going to bring you right to the Facebook page. And so Argonne Hills Chapel, if you don't know where it's at, Google it. Uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, one thing I do want to say, if somebody's listening, if, if you can volunteer and you would like to volunteer, please um, call the number on the various placards and, and we will get you plugged in. But um, folks are going to come through a, a single point. We're going to register the kids. We're going to give them uh, a ticket. And then they're, as the kids come, they're going to go through a pile of different organized games and activities, right. all of which is... And again, they're going to get piles of candy, they're going to get toys, they're going to get all kinds of neat stuff. And then what we're doing is we have a food truck that's going to be coming in and it's going to be parked behind Argonne Hills Chapel. We're going to have bright lights um, back there. We're going to have a bouncy house back there. So as everybody filters, safely filters through the various stations at Argonne Hills Chapel, they're going to culminate with being able to get a hamburger, a bag of chips, a, a drink, and plenty of candy. Um, and then if they're going to want to hang out some more and be in the bouncy house. So that's kind of a big you know, overview of, of what the Hallelujah Fest is going to be like. So if you'd like to volunteer, we would love to have you come out. Share that also on the Facebook page, and we'll get that out with, with this. Actually, we'll get it out probably before this comes out, but we need volunteers. Yes. Uh, we could do that today. So when you have we have people listening mm -hmm. and watching, if somebody comes, I guess getting back a little bit to what the initial intent for Hallelujah Festival way back when was for, yeah. 
how do you tell if you know somebody comes to you and is like, hey, chaplain, is this okay for me to do religiously? I know as a Muslim, there's a lot of times I got to come up and the first yeah. question I'm asking, like, hey, can I do this? How, yeah. how, how do you, I'm sure that that's not an uncommon question. It's not an uncommon question. In fact, I grew up in a home that, that did not practice um, the celebration of Halloween. Mm. And so I, I, under, I understand it from both sides. My wife and I, over the past, we've, We'll celebrate our 32nd year of marriage next summer. Um, and ever since we, we met in Bible College in Maine, both of us, our passion had been working, teaching, taking care of kids. That's mm. always been our passion. And so we, we have been doing this you know, long before I became an Army chaplain. Um, my wife and I were children's pastors at two different churches in Minnesota and um uh, minnesota and missouri um but we've been doing these harvest hallelujah festivals you know for years and years and over the years we've had families that are like well no i don't want to you know and and i would i would say the same thing 30 years later that we said way back then well you don't have to mm. there there is nothing that is overtly religious or or other than the fact that you're coming to a, a worship facility, which is the same yeah. worship facility that we have several faith groups meeting in, in that facility. So there's nothing that's like overtly, oh, well, you will have to, you know, pick up Bibles or Bible verses or no, it, it's not an event at which it's not a church event. Mm -hmm. it, it is a, a, a Halloween trick or treating alternative so the the nice thing is it's friday the 27th and so and mom and dad want to bring the kids out for an alternative or at argon hills they're they're invited and if the following tuesday they want to go out and trick-or-treat and they believe in that yep. that's perfectly fine if somebody were to come to us again there'll be enough chaplains there and and leaders that we would just have a simple conversation and say if this is something that, that you find offensive or, or you do not feel comfortable with, please don't don't come right. through. But there's nothing here that, that is promoting probably what you believe is the reason you shouldn't be doing it. That's not right. present there. So right. again, our we, we want to open our arms up as a as a chapel religious support office community and embrace anybody who wants to come in you know, from, from Fort Meade or the military family, uh, families, retirees, every, anybody who can get to Argonne Hills is invited to come. And it's free. <laughs> it's 100% free. That's fantastic. It is. We love a free activity on the installation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I do. Fr free is good. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to the Hallelujah Festival, Harvest Festival, which one are uh, Well, it's officially Harvest a Hallelujah Festival, Hallelujah. as the chaplain said, but yeah. maybe next year. Um, could you tell us more about the services that yes. the Religious Support Office does offer outside of these activities? I absolutely can. I've, I have literally, over the past 90 days, submersed myself in the Religious Support Office's operations, or Religious Support Operations here that occur on Fort Meade. So, we have a, a smorgasbord, um, a buffet of activities that that are available to, to all faith groups or the majority of faith groups here in Fort Meade. Um, we, we've got three um, Protestant, uh, traditional uh, Christian Protestant services. We have services for the Latter-day Saints. We have uh, a Friday event for our Muslim uh, Department of Defense personnel, anybody who chooses to come out. We, we have a, a Jewish rabbi who I spent about an hour and a half with yesterday, uh, just getting to know him. We, and, and one of the exciting things is for a period of time, we did not have a Catholic priest on okay. Fort Meade, Maryland. And <clears throat> last month, after a lot of work, a lot yeah. of people don't don't see out front, they're just like, oh, the priest is here. 
but there's a lot of work that, that we and our command and staff and, right. and the side meetings and all of that, that that we spend getting kind of the foundation upon which they can actually stand on, which is a contract outside of a contract, you know, a, a civilian priest can't come in. So we finally got our, our Catholic priest, uh, Father pa Patrick Monahan, um, and he started, I don't know the exact date, uh, middle, I think 17 September, yep. if, if memory so serves right. right. And then 21 September or 22, that Friday, we celebrated the um, feast of St. Maurice, the patron saint of Fort Meade, Maryland. And, and since then, we've, we've been having Catholic Mass back at the Our Lady of Peace Chapel, which is Argonne Hills, um, at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Thank you, Chaplain Ballman, so much for joining us today on today's podcast and telling us more about the Hallelujah Festival um, and all the services that the RSO has to offer. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today, whether you're listening or watching, and we hope to see you next time on the next episode of Fort Meade Declassified. Just God is amazing. Life is just a marathon, so basic.